To me, there are very few things in wrestling quite like a great champion. That great champion or great champions just set everything downstream in the proper pecking order. Everything flows better. You've got your foundational franchise piece that works. It elevates your product. Everything feels more big league. It's just a reality. Like we think about all the great world champions we've seen in wrestling over the years. Whether that's going back to the NWA days, whether that's going back to WCW, WWF, shit, I'll even throw in their ECW, I suppose. Right? When there's a great world champion, there are great champions, even in the mid-card, tag team, women's, whatever. It just naturally elevates the product. And I certainly understand the appeal of having champions carry the strap for a long period of time. Because one way that you can, in theory, make a champion feel bigger, make a champion feel better, make a champion feel more important, more consequential, more you should give a fuck about them, is they carry the strap for a long time. Now, of course, this doesn't always work, right? Think back to CM Punk's, what was it, 434-day uh, championship reign? He didn't feel big league for a guy that carried the strap for over a year. He felt like a guy that was playing second fiddle to John Cena and among other people, Johnny Ace, John Laronitis, and eventually was just a 434-day transitional champion to get the strap on Rock at Rumble 2013, so Rock could then job out to Cena at WrestleMania 29. So title reign length does not always equate to title length greatness. Now, you can go too far in the other way. You go back to the Attitude Era days, the Monday Night War days, and you know, it's always easy to pick on Vince Russo for how much he hot-shotted titles during that reign, and the WWF in general would hot-shot a lot of the title changes and make them short reigns, etc. All true, right? But WWE was not alone in that. WCW certainly was guilty of that too. Like they would sit there and with only a couple of days build up, have Goldberg beat Hogan for the strap in the Georgia Dome in front of 40,000 people, where if you had bothered to actually build that up for maybe a month or two and try to do it at pay-per-view, you might've been able to sell 70,000 plus tickets. But again, WCW. So I'm not saying that I want to see a bunch of hot shotted titles and title reigns. However, the WWE, in my estimation, in my opinion, has a bit of a problem of their own creation, which isn't the first time I've said it about them, with all of their long-reigning champions. And it really, really struck me as I was watching Crown Jewel on Saturday. Because as I watched that show, knowing that that was WWE's big money grab show, right? I sat there and said to myself, out of all the champions that are defending straps on this show, there's only one championship that I feel is at risk. There's only one championship that I believe the challenger could actually win. That was Logan Paul, the United States Championship. He won it. And ironically enough, probably because of the two guys that were involved in the match, but the fact that I could actually see a title change, that was the match that I was looking forward to the most on the show. But the other title matches, Seth Rollins wasn't losing, Roman Reigns wasn't losing, Rhea Ripley wasn't losing. And that's my point. You get into this predictable pattern where you go long enough with these folks as champion you start to pick and choose your spots where you might actually think they have a shot at dropping the title. And otherwise, if it's not one of those spots, you really don't care. Or at least I don't really care. To me, that's a problem and a very, pretty big problem. It's one of the big things that wrestling has always lived off of, especially when it's at its best, right? Is that feeling of spontaneity. That feeling of you never know what could happen? 
Well, too often now you watch a WWE show and it feels like you know what can happen. You know, especially when you talk about how a Roman Reigns title match is going to go. But let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> That's how it works when you're the big dog, the tribal chief, the head of the table. He can take a look at something and says, that doesn't work for me. Ooh, ah. <laughs> but it's not just Roman, right? Like Roman's been champion for three and a half years. Damn near. That's a long ass title reign. Historic ass title reign. Especially, I'm only working every two to three months, brother. <laughs> so that's one thing, right? Like that's a monster in and of itself. But it's not just about that. To me, I even think of it as when we're talking about Roman Reigns in this long ass title reign, it starts to feel a little devalued not even involving anything that's going on with Roman Reigns or whatever storyline he's in, whatever program he's in, whatever opponent he's working against, it starts to feel devalued when you've got an intercontinental champion that's held the strap since June of 2022, a women's world champion in Rhea Ripley that's held the strap since WrestleMania 39, was it night one? And then when did Seth Rollins win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? Was it May? Like, those are four of their most prominent titles that all of those reigns are six-plus months. And you might think I'm overanalyzing this and overthinking it too much. And I understand why you would say that. But I'm talking about my perspective as a fan and talking about at a moment in time where I'm watching so little wrestling right now because it just doesn't grab me. I feel absolutely no urgency to have to watch the product. I feel absolutely no fear of I'm going to miss out on something. And that's not because I could just sit there on the YouTube page or on social media and see it shortly thereafter. I don't have any fear of missing out. There's no FOMO for me on this because I don't feel like I'd be missing out on much of anything because it's pretty pathetically predictable and boring at this point. If all of your champions have super long title reigns, then in my opinion, none of those championship reigns really stand out too much from the rest. They don't feel different, they don't look different, and it creates this environment with your product of staleness. And that's the vibe that I personally am getting right now from WWE. This is a stale ass product. And some of you are probably going to quip in the comments, well, they should have had Cody win at WrestleMania 39. Still the same general problem. I highly doubt they would have Cody drop the strap quickly. So he would have been carrying the belt for almost eight months now. And you've got another long reigning champion. Yeah, Roman has been champion three plus years. It's a whole different element there. But again, it's one thing to have Roman go that long in like historic territory. But then you've got Gunther is sitting there and breaking the record for the longest intercontinental championship ring. And it'd be one thing if you sat there and said that you're doing all of these long title reigns in concert because you're buying yourself time like a JBL in 2004 into 2005 because you'll want to get John Cena ready. They don't have that shit right now. They're not trying to get anybody ready to build up as that kind of next big thing. You could say, well, what about Jade Cargill? Who says that she would go after Rhea Ripley? And even if she did, like it's Jade Cargill. She doesn't need that type of buildup, right? You're not building up Cody Rhodes to another level to be the guy for the next 10, 15 years. No, you're fucking not. Which is also why he shouldn't be the guy to beat Roman at Mania. <clears throat> so, like I said, it'd be one thing if this was something where you said, hey, Roman's going to be champ for three plus years and the guy that beats him is going to be the guy for the next decade. It'd be one thing if you said, hey, Gunther's going to carry the IC strap for a year and a half, two years. And then when he's beaten, here's this next guy that you say 
is going to be a future main eventer. Who the fuck's to say Gunther himself is even going to be a real deal main eventer? I don't see it. Right? Seth Rollins? He's just not on that level. So to me, it creates this bottleneck, this log jam, to where you've got a bunch of champions holding straps for too damn long, makes your product pathetically predictable and plain ass boring. And when they do lose these straps eventually, it feels more like a sense of relief than a sense of joy. This is a problem, in my opinion, entirely of the WWE's own doing and something that they need to rectify because this shit, what they're doing right now, all these long title reigns, it's not that jam. It just ain't.